Hey everybody, I wanted to do a, a new small series uh, about this song that I'm trying to finish right now. Today we're going to be talking about the drum part using the drummer track, which really was the start of the entire song. We're still doing the alternate logic manual project. Uh, we took a little bit of a break over uh, some holidays and semester stuff. But um, we'll be back at that shortly in December. But today, I just want to look at some of this other stuff because some really interesting things came up as I was working on this particular song. Let me play just the, the very beginning of this um, so you can hear what we're talking about. And then um, we'll jump into the drummer track. <laughs> upon your face They fall from eye to chin and then to empty space Okay, so this uh, particular drummer, you'll see we have two drummer tracks up right now. And so the first thing I want to do is talk about the original track for a moment. Let me actually play a little bit of that one so you can hear it. So very similar. It's essentially the same kit, just with different performance parts. And um, one of the things that we did, obviously, was the change in the hi-hat pattern. But there's a number of other changes. And one of the reasons why there's two tracks is that originally I had this part in here that I liked, or we started with. And I started uh, writing this song, essentially with three instruments, um, and that was this polka, accordion, um, this, let's see, what instrument's this? This is the electric piano, and then we had the drums. This is where it all started. And that electric piano part is interesting. And so it um, really works best when it is uh, put off of the groove track with that original drummer track uh, being the groove source. And so I put that on there. If you look at some of these drummer regions, click on the details, you'll see some of them are... Um, have different feels to them. That one's a pushing feel, even more, a little bit less, more, more. That one actually slows it down. That one actually pulls even further later on, and then it pushes again, and then it pulls again. And um, all of that I had done with that as the groove star, and these are following it. Um, and there's a, a brass section that follows it. And so I liked all of that. And one thing I learned is that you can still set a muted track as the groove source, but I'm having a different drummer track play. And these ones actually have different feel options here. Some of them are pushing and pulling slightly less or more. But like, for instance, you see these last two are both pushing and that one was originally pulling at the end. Um, I didn't, I, I really went through and fine tuned the whole drummer track with the, the pull and the push, also in terms of how many uh, had fills happening at various times. For instance, this original verse has no fills happening. I had to put in a fill by cutting it and turning up the fills. Then the chorus had a normal amount of fill, and some of them have more or less. Again, at the end here, very few fills. This is uh, like the bridge section. <laughs> Take a look away. See what I can see. Take a look away. 
So using a section like that where I don't want any fills to happen, but I do want to fill as it transitions into the next section, then I'm just cutting it and adding fills in for that one little region. And in this case, I want a guaranteed full length fill. So I turn it all the way up to 100%. And, and that tends to do a nice uh, job of getting the fills just how I want them. Now with this other verse here, the fills are up a little bit. It's gonna do a fill right at the end of that region. Plus the next little region is 100% fill. And so I can get like a double fill section there, which I really liked for that one transition. And so you don't have to necessarily just turn on fills for a whole longer section. I could cut up a number of these, make them all fills, and we can go into like a two bar fill if we wanted to. Um, and so I think that the drums really started to tighten down. One thing um, that I was really trying to do with some of this uh, was get that hi-hat pattern. And I have the hi-hat and the snare, the only two elements turned on. The snare is following pattern number one and of the four hi-hat patterns, number four is the one that does the 16th notes. It's still on our matrix here, the most complex section, but it's not, it's about halfway between loud and soft. So if I were to adjust this down to simple, you'd hear something different too. like a single random snare hit right in the middle there, um, which is kind of funny. But I like having more of the snare without the kick, so I put that up in the more complex section. I turn around and see the tears upon your face. They fall from... Now I'm not using the follow any other part. A lot of times I will use that. Uh, and this means that I can select which thing I want it to interact with. And I just, I, I don't have, I didn't have very good experience in this particular tune because the minute I'm doing the follow, then some of these other elements don't work the same way. And that's intentional by design. It's interacting with the other parts and following along. In this case, I want the drummer just to be like, you know what, I've got my set pattern, I want to play it. And, you know, the, the band, everybody else that is using the groove track is going to follow along with the, what we're calling kind of the ghost drummer that's not actually playing for us. Um, but it's the same essential timing, so it'll line up in that sense. But I, I just wanted the drummer to kind of focus in on its part rather than changing things up. So for instance, if we did it here, so we're on pattern five. From eye to chin and then to it. Say I followed along with uh, instrument nine, which is the bass part. Empty space, and yet they never seem to ever hit the floor. Or audio one, which is the vocal part. Nice track labeling going on here. They fall from eye to chin and then to empty space. And yet they never seem to ever hit the floor. It just feels like some of the, the other parts are coming in more randomly then. And I want it to actually be a nice, solid, repetitive pattern. So that's going to be the difference. If you want to follow, it's going to be more interactive, less consistent of a part. It's going to more dynamically changed throughout. And in some cases that's perfect. In this case, I want it to be really stable. I turn around and see the tears upon your face. They fall from eye to chin and then to empty space. And yet they never seem to ever hit the floor. The other thing I could do with some of these is change the open and close hi-hat part um, so I could make it more open. 
or we could do all the way closed. Tell me something more. The automatic is going to in my opinion give a little bit more realistic part for this with uh you know some of them being a little bit looser and some of them being a little bit tighter and um, i think for this i like that because it's such a prominent rhythmic element um, i want this to be sold as much as possible as a real drummer um, it's already difficult enough that it's a drummer track and you can kind of tell but i do think that that is the the best compromise The last thing I was doing is changing the kick a little bit, raising up the tuning a little bit, dampening it quite a bit, and then just barely turning it down. They fall from eye to chin and then to empty space. And yet they never seem to ever hit the floor. They look into my soul, they tell. But we could have done this for any number of the instruments to get it just right. And we could have changed some of these. If we have something that's too loud, um, say we're not using the producer kits, which in this case I'm not, I could slightly turn down like the hi-hat part. Tell me something more I'm scared. But the other th section that we did something interesting here, I think, um, is with the actual bridge. Let's go from the chorus, the second chorus, which adds another layer. And actually, with, I think it's that chorus right there. So it's from this first one. You're going to see we come out of the verse when we're just doing a pattern. This chorus goes into what's called halftime. And actually, let's play it from the beginning of it. So this one is in halftime. And it has kind of a, a normal fill amount. It's definitely pushing in the feel a little bit. And as we go into the second one, the feel pushes more, twice as much, and we go from halftime into double time. From there, right back into halftime, and we push or the change the feel to pull. And so, what we're getting here is, I think, a lot more, it's a lot closer to what a real drummer would do. Change the section of a song, go into one that's really cut back. You know that they're going to be pulling on that feel. We're not actually changing the tempo, they're not slowing down, they're just sitting on the other side of the beat. And so we end up with this uh, dynamic drum part, which is adding into the emotion of the parts of the song uh, in a way that a real drummer would just do so naturally. And we have all those abilities to be able to go back and forth and change all of that. We're going back and forth between different of the auxiliary percussions. We have different elements here. For instance, uh, on the chorus here, you'll see we have the, the snare and the cymbals and the kick. We go into this other bridge section. We get rid of everything but the hi-hat and the kick. And we go into that halftime with the pulling feel. And we go right from there into a full fill, which has a similar pull, except, yeah, it's, I think it's pretty much exact, right up to a pushing feel in that next chorus where we've added in 
the snare and go back to the cymbals with a different auxiliary percussion element. On top of all of that, we have a channel EQ, which is doing a lot of boosting up in the highs. I like kind of uh, oversaturating, kind of with the uh, high frequencies. We have a compressor which is working on this. But we have right here the mix between the input and the output set to 72%, which means that um, the input, the raw, uncompressed drums are making it through this, and we're mixing that in with the compressed version. So that's like uh, Compansion or the New York style kind of drums where uh, we have compression engaged, but also the original uncompressed being mixed together so that you have the dynamic range, but also the compressed range uh, working together, which I really like that, that logic compression has that built in. And then I have this limiter. Do you hear the theme? doing way too much and um, I like that squash sound as a second layer through there. Probably too much, I probably should pull that back but um, we're gonna leave it on there. We'll talk about reverb in, in a different uh, video but um, I wanted to show just all the different elements that go into this particular drum sound and all the different thought processes and designing it and figuring out how I wanted it to go. It's not just something where you dump out uh, you know these tracks with a with a drummer track and it does all the work you still have to think about the performance and, and the song and how it's all working together okay so that's it for this i hope you enjoyed this and um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments and if you like this then we can you know break apart some other parts of the song i think there's some really interesting vocal production these are all the vocal tracks that are happening we didn't look yet at the bass part which uh, is pretty straightforward, but interesting. The signal chain on that is uh, one of my favorites for low frequencies. And, and yet we get a decently big sound from a minimal amount of tracks. And so um, we'll be, I think we'll at least do one more video about this, maybe to um, come back. We'll, you know, we'll do these in the next couple of weeks, but Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you're having a great week and we'll be doing a lot more videos in December. So get ready for that.